Come on, Holmes. Let's go work on our kayaking skills. If you're going to be a search and rescue dog, you got to be confident in the boat. Oh, what's that cameraman doing there? Oh, look how rocky our path is, Holmes. What are we going to do here? Oh, let's go through here and try not to dump our kayak down. Whoa! Holmes, you know, training you has turned into kind of a dangerous endeavor. Oh. I need some off wheel. Oh, casters on my kayak. Oh, I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot harder going uphill than coming downhill, Mr. Holmes. You're lucky I like you so much. The links that I go to, ah, to do a good job. It's crazy. Uh, here we are, out of the rocks and onto the sand. Uh, let's see if this is going to work. Oh, come on, sand. There we go, not too bad. Come on, Mr. Holmes. Oh, nobody's here today. They must have known I was coming. They said, oh, Stony Dennis is coming, so we'll block off the beach uh, for the internet's foremost dog trainer. It's very nice of them, huh, Holmes? Come on, kayak. All right. Let's try to find us a spot in a river that's not too awfully stinky because it's kind of low. Whenever the river gets low, it gets a little bit stinky. Let me see, logs, logs, logs. Let's go down here, Holmes. This one little spot where there's not quite so many logs. Right about here. This will give us a little bit of waiting room in between those big logs. Oh, look at all the minnows. Look at all those minnows. Dun, dun, dun. All right. <sighs> Put my leash on you. You are a very good dog, Holmes. But you're going to be stinky, stinky on the ride home. Should have brought my pickup truck, but... All you fancy dogs that come to visit me are too good to ride in the back of a pickup truck. It's kind of crazy. All right. Let's just work on something simple to get started. Ah, oh, that's right. Come on. Just get up in here. Very nice. Very nice. Now, will this little hunk of liver here, will that give you a little bit of extra incentive to get all the way up in the kayak? Oh, I figured it would. Good boy. Good boy. Very nice. Good. Now, nobody wants to look at your behind, so turn around there. Here. Turn around here. Show everybody what kind of good boy you are. Now, wait there. Ah, oh, don't you get up, nerd. Stay there. Very nice. Very nice. You just stay and be patient. 
We're going to get to the fun stuff in a minute. Very nice. Okay, so we mastered at the kennel, just sitting on the kayak on uh, dry ground. I put it up on some blocks and set it there and got uh, homes to get up there and get on it. Then I took one, then I took the blocks out and let the kayak kind of be wobbly at the kennel, okay? And uh, so I acclimated him to sitting on the kayak and it being a little bit wobbly. And now we've come to the river and I pulled the kayak over to the edge of the water. And uh, now I'm going to try to move out into the water and let him get used to the, sens the sensation of floating, okay? Which it shouldn't be, you know, too awful big a deal, but it might be. You just never know. Got his leash on him just in case he goes to acting wild and crazy, deciding he's going to go somewhere that he shouldn't go. Oh, now stay right there, Holmesy. Whoa. Now I'm just going to pull him out here very slowly. Try not to fall down. Now we're floating. Okay, guys, we're floating. We're going to have to try to avoid some logs here because oh the river is fraught with logs and uh so you know here's what i'm doing i'm just putting him out here now look i'm gonna move the move my kayak around some and every so often i'm gonna give him a treat now in this context guys the treats don't mean it's not like he's sitting up here on the kayak and overcoming whatever anxiety might be related to getting on the kayak for a treat so when you're watching these videos don't just think you can go out in the world and uh, take a treat and your dog all of a sudden be brave that, that's not what's happening I've done, a lot of, I've done a lot of work with this dog to build up trust. And what the treat is, is the physical manifestation of my approval of what he's doing, okay? So when I give him a treat, there's a lot more to it than that piece of food, okay? It lets him know that he's doing the right thing and that uh, the activity that we're engaged in is headed in a fun direction. Good, good boy. Wait there. Now, Day. This is what's called a Mirage Drive. Now guys, if you're going to get a kayak, you should get you a Hobie kayak because these are the very best. I'm not the world's best paddler, but I can pedal. Learned to pedal a tricycle when I was a little kid and never forgot. So this kayak works with these pedals. And so you just pull the kayak out in the water. Oh, and stick these pedals in here. Now, while I'm putting this ki these pedals in here, you'll notice it kind of makes a lot of racket. Because I'm not the world's best at getting them in there. Now, so the dog's in there. Okay. All right, so I got my Mirage Drive in. I got the dog in. I got my camera gear in a Pelican case in case uh, something happens, something falls out. Now look, I'm just gonna move the dog around. And bring him back to me. Turn him. Now see, he'll start getting nervous a little bit. Good boy. To alleviate that nervousness, I'm gonna give him a little treat. Now again, the treat is not overcoming the nervousness. The treat just represents that I'm in this with them and it's my approval, you know, my attention. It uh, draws, a, draws a, his attention to the fact that he's doing the right thing by waiting and being patient. Okay, so now I feel like uh, I'm getting off to a good start with him understanding the concept of staying in this kayak while uh, it's moving. So, ah. Uh, I'm going to sit down in here, Ugh. take these chacos off, and I'm going to start the paddling. Now, if the dog falls off, I'll jump out there and get him. <laughs> I'm going to go away, staying relatively close to the bank in case something goes wrong. I can use my paddle if I need to turn quickly. Now all this stuff, this is socialization guys. Like some of the things that you don't think about when you're socializing your dog 
is like uh, what are all the factors that are going to be involved in the socialization process? Like the paddle, like I had put him at the kennel, you know, in the kayak, and I had to sit down in the kayak just like this. I had to sit down just like this right here, sit in here, make everything the same, move my paddle around so that when we finally got out here on the river, that he would be, you know, kind of chill with this, this whole process. He would be familiar with it. Then we're going to go from the river, okay, to the lake, and he's going to be out in a whole bunch of water at that point. And, uh, you know, I tell you what gets us at the lake is these dang little flies, these little deer flies. They eat the dogs up when we're at the river. I mean, when we're at the lake. Down here at the river, it's not too bad. Now, if I've done my job right, this dog's just going to chill. He's going to enjoy the ride. Very nice, Holmes. Very nice. I got my cameraman out here. <laughs> up to her waist in her Lulu pants. <laughs> Don't walk around too much, you're gonna hit a log there. Ruin my camera, ruin those fancy Lulu pants. And you'll notice that I'm just gradually going farther and farther away from the bank. When you're socializing a dog to water, uh, it's very important to not underestimate how proximity to the bank or lack thereof creates anxiety, right? I've had many a dog that I just got a little bit too excited getting away from the, getting away from the bank and uh, you know, <laughs> they kind of panic and jump and run to the bank, which isn't that bad right now because it's the fall. But uh, like when it's winter time, it's, it's, it's really aggravating, you know. Dog gets wet and then you get wet. Good. Now I'm gonna go back to my paddling. Just keep the dog acclimated to what we're doing. Oh, and all you kayakers that watch my videos out there, do not be making fun of my paddling technique. I am not claiming to be some type of expert kayak paddler or maneuverer or whatever you call it. Oh, that's why I bought a fancy kayak, so that I didn't have to be an expert. Just kind of practice making some little lazy turns here. Now you'll notice that there's a lot more movement in my kayak. Oh, when I'm trying to do these paddling turns. And that, uh, the dog starts moving around a little bit, acting just a little bit anxious. That's why I'm gonna knock all this out here at the river before I head off to the lake and get into big water where the oh, home of the awful deer flies. All right, so I'm gonna finish up this little session just by paddling across the river. Oh, dude, do not chew up my fancy Holby kayak pedals there, dude. My Mirage Drive. And here we go, trucking it, making good time. So I'm very cognizant of any signs of stress in the dog. If a dog's getting stressed when I change one, variables and what I do is I back up a little bit and make it easier for the dog. Yeah see I'm, I'm getting it now and look at that you see how that dog laid down right there that's what I'm looking for complete relaxation very nice Now, got a good speed going. Good. Very nice. Very nice, Holmes.
All right, now we head back to the bank and go hide and play in the woods. And just like that, I find myself at the end of my journey with my little buddy Holmes. Dog training is a strange process, uh, especially if you do it on a professional level. I mean, it's filled with mixed emotions, lots and lots of mixed emotions. A little fellow like Holmes comes in and, uh, you know, of course I've got a job to do, so I get right to work, making sure that I hit all the benchmarks like I'm supposed to. Right off the bat, we start working on building their attention span and impulse control, establishing a basic vocabulary, maximizing their physical ability through core exercises and proprioception drills, and of course, uh, you know, tons and tons of interspecies, intraspecies, and just plain old physical socialization. I mean, that's what I, I go on and on about all the time. Plus, in between those activities, I'm laying the groundwork for specific attributes that the puppy might need later in life. Uh, my goal is always to prepare the puppy in such a way as I maximize its ability to assimilate new patterns and skills as an adult working dog. But to be honest with you, it's all the stuff that happens in between the work that makes it hard to let these little fellas go. I spend a lot of time with these dogs, and I especially spent a lot of time with this little fella over the last few weeks. I grew, honestly, especially fond of him. Like I said, my job, it's kind of weird, really. You know, I get these puppies in here, and I know I'm going to have to send them home pretty soon, and I completely understand that I need a certain degree of emotional detachment to do my job properly, but at the same time, I mean, it is a job that requires a high degree of empathy and emotion. Uh, it's a catch-22, I think they call it. Uh, but look at him. I mean, look at him in that boat. He's just hanging out with me. I mean, you know, we're buddies. We're friends, and uh, it's hard to let him go. When you start doing stuff like this, guys, they look at you a certain way. I mean, just look at his face. I mean, could you really look at that face and, when he left, not have a little bit of a hole in your heart? Well, you know, I can't either. And so, uh, I don't know. Well, that's just my thoughts on it. Uh, I'll see you guys next month.